Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to figure out the first day of the month for any given date. We're going to use the date serial function. And with the same kind of technique, we're going to also figure out the last day of the month, the first day of the previous month, the last day of the previous month, the first day of next month, and the last day of next month. You ready? Here we go. Before we get started, go make sure you watch my calculated fields video if you've never made a calculated query before, because that's how we're going to do the little date calculations in a query. All right, so go watch that. Next, go watch my year, month, day video. That's three separate functions, year, month, and day. That lets you take a date value apart into its components, right? The year, the month, and the day, because we have to take the date apart with these three functions and then put them back together with date serial. And then go watch my date serial video. Now I'm gonna be showing you date serial in this video, but go watch the date serial video so you have some basic understanding of how date serial works first, because I'm not gonna go over all that stuff again. So go watch this, then come on back. And also quick mention, I'm using the ISO date format because I've got students all over the world. The ISO date format is year, month, day, just like that. And it's unambiguous, so everybody has the same date. So I recommend using that. So go check out this video if you want to learn more about that. Okay, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download this off my website if you want a copy of it, but you don't really need it. You can use any table that you want. Here I've got a customer table and I've got a customer sense field in here, how long they've been a customer. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out of any date, all right, we'll take that date, we'll figure out what's the first day of that month. Well, gee, that is the first day of the month, but let's say we take this date. <laughs> what's the first day of that month? What's the last day of that month? First and last dates of the previous month and the next month. Are you ready? All right, let's go over to a query. Now you can do these calculations in a form or you can do them in a query or you can do them in VBA if you want to. I don't recommend putting calculated values in tables though. That's bad, that's no, no. So go to create, query design. Bring in the customer T or whatever table has your date field in it. Let's find that customer sense. Bring it over here. Okay, now, I don't want to have to call this thing customer sense all the time. So to keep my queries nice and short, I'm going to call customer sense D as in date. That's it. That's all you do. Put a D colon in front of that. See that? I just zoomed in for you. D colon is basically, that's called aliasing. I'm saying, take customer sense and just call it D. It makes all the rest of my calculations so much easier. All right, you ready? So the first thing I want to calculate is the first day of the month that that thing falls on. All right, I'm going to zoom in again so you can see it better. Okay, so first day month is going to be date serial. All right, we want the year of that date, right? So use the year function of D. I want the month of that date, right? And then I want the first day of that month. So there's a one. There you go. That's all it is. All right, hit OK. Let's save this query. We'll call it uh, my month Q or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't matter. All right, so run that. And there you should have the first day of all of those months. So 1998, uh, July 30th, there's July 1st, right? August 4th, there's, uh, excuse me, November 4th, <laughs> there's November 1st, and so on down the line. Okay, that's an easy one. Okay, let's go back to design view. Now, the next one, let's just slide that up there so we don't have to look at that one. Okay. The next one is let's calculate the last day of the current month. Now, every month has a different number of days. Some have 30, some have 31, some have 28. 29, whatever. So we can't just always say, like the first of the month, we can always say, just give me a one. But the last day of the month, it, it, it floats around, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, give me the first day of next month and go back a day. All right, see how that works? Now there's two ways we can do this. Let me zoom in. All right, so last day of the current month is going to be date serial. It's going to be year of D, just like we did before. We're going to say month of D plus one. Now, an interesting thing about the way that date serial works is that 
if you add a month and 12 becomes 13, it, it rotates around a one and the year goes up. So that's very nice. The date serial function handles that for you. So you're not going to get the 13th month. All right, it'll add one to the year for you automatically. Now, there's two ways you can do this. All right, you can say, give me the first of next month and then subtract a day because this whole thing is a date value, right? So you could say, give me the first of next month and then subtract a day. Let me show you that working here. Watch this. See? There's the last day. See, it goes forward. This one goes forward to December 1st and then back a day, right? Just like here. Okay, forward to January 1st of 99, and then back a day. Or the other way you can do it, it's kind of weird. Instead of putting the minus one out here, you could put a zero there. It's kind of weird. That's how they, I don't know, that's how they do it. I've seen this like this in a lot of books. All right, but it works the same way. It does the same thing. Okay. Okay, so moving on, let's do the first day of the previous month. Okay. Ready? Zoom in. First day previous month is going to be date serial. And all of these are going to start off with the year of whatever date that is. Okay. And it's going to be the month of whatever date that is. Minus one, comma one. Right? Take the current month, back it up one. And again, if that backs you into the previous year, it will back up the year for you and give me the first date of that month and run it and there you go so for may 5th 99 you get april 1st that's the first day of the previous month so last day of the previous month there's again there's two ways you could do it you could calculate the first day of this month and then subtract a day if you want to or you could do that little zero trick i showed you before right last day previous month is going to be date serial year of D, okay, month of D, and then a zero. All right, it says, give me the current year, the current month, back it up one day. So it's the last day of the previous month. So that, that zero in that day position is like saying minus one. It's really, that's silly, I know. Or just say of, you know, of this minus one. Last day, previous month. Either one works fine. Okay, okay, double check. Make sure it works. Last day of the previous month. Good. Okay? Okay. The next two are a little more straightforward because we're just adding. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say the first day of next month is date serial. All right? Year of D. And then month of D plus one, comma one. Right? Take the current year. The current month, add one to it, wrap around to January if you have to, and give me the first day of that month. Pretty straightforward. Okay, like right here, we've got, uh, let's see, yep. I was trying to find one from December. There's one from December 22nd of 16. It wraps around to January 1st of 17. Okay, there's another one there. Okay, all right, working good. Now, one more. We're going to do the last day of next month okay last day next month date serial year of day month come here month of day but now we're going to go ahead two months and go back one day see how that works all right go ahead two months back a day that'll give you because i guess it's going to go to the first day to three months ahead and then come back one right or two months ahead and come back one. Or well, you know what I mean. All right. Hit OK. And then run it. And there you go. There's the last day of the following month. So for this one here, right? If your date is November 1st, it's going to give you December 31st. And there are all of your contestants, ladies and gentlemen. You got the first day of this month. Last day of this month. First and last days of the previous month. First and last days of the next month. I'm, I don't, I'm sick of all these month calculations. So I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really, really, really want to learn all this date stuff, I cover it in Access Expert Level 27 and in Level 28. All kinds of different date functions, date add, date diff, date part, date serial, first day of a quarter, first day, last day of the year, first day of your mom's whatever. I don't know. 
<laughs> all kinds of stuff I cover. And there's this monster date time seminar I got too. It covers all this different stuff. You name it, I cover it. If it has to do with dates, is it a work day? Uh, is, it a, is it a scheduled holiday? All kinds of stuff. Reminders, pop-ups, you name it, it's in here. All right, it's like ragu. It's in there. Or is that prego? It's one of those. I don't know. <laughs> so that, ladies and gentlemen, is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.